I give it sit to the lady. Usually I sit down and she throws in one last chord and I have to sit and stand. <laughs> sit and stand. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of your smiling faces from wherever they've come, even if you are from Wapan or La Crosse. We love you here anyway. And from other places out there. Isn't are there some white people here? Colleen, I thought your family was a boy. Yeah, they don't want to admit it. <laughs> Welcome true. to YouTube and wherever you're from. Um, the order of service this morning for confirmation is printed in your worship book and we'll follow it exactly as it's printed, singing the numbers of verses um, for, of hymns as they appear. Um, we will also, communion is also served this morning as it always is at Lakeview. And we believe that Jesus Christ is truly present in those elements the wafer, the bread, the wine, and the juice. The juice is white. And we invite all believers, regardless of your denomination, to join us this morning if you choose to do that. The ushers will usher you forward to kneel at the rail. You'll receive, you'll remove the juice when it comes to you out of the tray because our chalices are being replated. The red is the wine, the white is the grape juice. If you prefer, either just take the one um, that you wish to have and then eat, drink, and return to your seats. I remind people to sign the fellowship pads this morning and make sure that others around you can sign them also. Let me lift up a couple of things. Um, in me tonight, first of all, there's no left soloing today because our road home families, homeless families in the community, move into the building this morning at 11.30 and we need extra help downstairs. Where's Chris Anders? She's probably downstairs. <laughs> She's worried. We need help. If you can go downstairs to put up beds or make beds or help pick up Sunday school rooms immediately after the service, please do that. That will make the work very light and um, it'll be good for everybody and you're doing a very good thing. Um, remember this week as you travel through the building that guests are living here and we strive for quiet and confidentiality while they are here. Thank you to many of you who will be volunteering this week and to many of you who brought donations of food um, this morning for that. This evening at 4 o'clock you can come to the fellowship room and we'll serve you pizza and soda. All ages are invited and then at 4.30 we will be watching the 2003 film entitled Luther with uh, Joseph Fiennes as, the, uh, as playing the role of Martin Luther. Um, and you cannot use the excuse that I've got a Packer game because we will have you out of here at 7 o'clock so you can go home and watch that. And why is the Bears fan yelling in the back? <laughs> no, it wasn't you. <laughs> um, so come on over and learn more about Mar Martin Luther and still get home for the Packer game. There's all kinds of things to sign up for, including Crop Walk. Don't forget to go out and be a part of that. Next weekend is Crop Walk. <laughs> also remember, next weekend at um, 9.15 in this room is a very important special congregational meeting to talk about some exterior repairs to our building. And then you can also sign up for the Euchre Tournament and many other things um, in the entryway. Uh, I invite you to go out there and, and look afterwards. But right now I'd like to introduce our five confirmation students. I'm actually going to ask them to stand as I introduce you so people can be sure to attach a name of faith. So we'll begin with Ben Bugda, who is the son of Jason and Becky Bugda. Ben is a ninth grade student at Sun Prairie High School. <laughs> He wishes that. Okay, he is a ninth grade student at DeForest Senior High School. Ben is the only one of these five youth who was not baptized in this congregation. He was baptized at the prison in Waupun. <laughs> <laughs> or Emmanuel Lutheran in Waupun. Thank you, Ben. You may be seated. Connor Dalton is the son of Jim and Dana Dalton, and he's a ninth grade student at Madison East. And he um, was baptized here at Lakeview, and um, what else should they know about you? I know, that's probably all there really is to tell, because the rest of it is stuff we shouldn't be talking about in church. Okay, Garrett Curl. Garrett Curl um, is the son of Keith and Colleen Curl, who was also baptized here. He too is a student at that alleged high school in DeForest, and um, you know, your mom told me that the minute you were baptized, you said, I'm hungry, let's eat. <laughs> so, Jacob Stam 
comes to us from the family of Tracy and Christine Stamm. And you go to Wanakee High School where you're in ninth grade, the only one to wear a bow tie this morning. Please note. Set. And Golden Rody, who is the son of Scott and Lynn Rody, and you go to some school called Madison East on East Washington Avenue, and you're in ninth grade. All right. Sit down. As, you, as most of you know, our confirmation students participate in two years of study, and in their third year, ninth grade, they spend the majority of their time writing a paper on faith, which many of you heard last weekend, and all five of you did an excellent job at that. And many people have come to me expressing um, that, how good they felt after they had heard your papers, and that you had stimulated thoughts um, about faith for them, so thank you for doing that. I will now invite the congregation to rise if you're able, and we will sing the opening. forward the congregation may be seated. I should note that Aidan Dalton is assisting the choir this morning by banging on his drum. <laughs> In rhythm. Thanks, Aidan. <laughs> Praise God. 
first reading is from the fifth chapter of Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the, th the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to the man, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. And you know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud and honor your father and your mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these commandments since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he was shocked. And he went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded. And they said to one another, well then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. With God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to Jesus, look, we have left everything and we've followed you. Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you may be seated. I have a little prop today. Somebody added something to it. 
y'all that this is a toilet seat. When we go to the Green Lake Retreat, one of the little games we play is to see who can pull their body completely through this toilet seat. Okay? Colton, were you successful in doing that once? No? Garrett, I know you were. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a rare person who can get themselves to this toilet seat, but it can happen. If Jesus would have gone on our winter retreats with us, do you think he would have been able to get himself through this toilet seat? If Jesus would have been along on our winter retreats, do you think winter retreats, do you think he might have been the first person to drink down a blended happy meal to Dana's great delight? Or how many chicken feet do you think Jesus could get in his mouth that one time and get to the other side of the room, just like many of you have done? How well do you think he could have drunk a soda through his dirty sock? Connor, didn't you have to do that once? Your socks were disgusting. <laughs> and what position do you think Jesus would play during our outside cow tongue football game played with, of course, a real cow tongue? And do you think Jesus would have enjoyed dressing Mr. Robbins up in Dana Dalton's blue fuzzy robe as much as we all do at every retreat? <laughs> well, I don't have answers to most of those questions, but the answer that I do have, I believe that if Jesus would spend more time with Lakeview Lutheran Church on winter retreats, that the gospel would sound different this morning. Because Jesus would have said, it's easier for a confirmation student to fit through a toilet seat than for a rich person to get to heaven. By the way, I know Garrett can't fit through the toilet seat. <laughs> Garrett, Ben, Jacob, Colton, and Connor, despite all the mean things that you've tried to do to me at retreat, or the mean things that you've tried to do in the van on many van trips, or while we're sleeping together in boxes on the front yard of the chapel, or while we're off on mission trips, or even during confirmation class, when you shut the lights off and you block the door, lock it so I can't get in, so I've got a key. <laughs> <laughs> but I laugh every time. Even though you have done all those things to me, I still enjoy having each one of you in class. And I still love you, even if you make remarks about my hair in your bank paper, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so today marks kind of the end of an era. You guys don't have to come to class anymore. You're done with confirmation class on Sunday morning. But even though today ends the, marks the end of that era, today marks the beginning of a new era an era of your spiritual independence. Today, the day we call Confirmation Sunday, is the day that you really come forward and affirm your baptismal covenant, the covenant that was made on your behalf by your parents and baptismal sponsors when you were once babies. Yes, cute, innocent, cuddly little babies. Oh, how you've changed. <laughs> In a few moments, you five are going to come up here and you're going to tell the rest of us in the room that it is your intention to do these things. To live faithfully among God's people, to hear the word of God and to share in God's holy meal on a regular basis, to follow the example of Jesus in the world, and to work for peace and justice. Now before you do that this morning, I want you to think about the gospel lesson that we just heard, that I just read. Soon, you're going to be called on to reaffirm that you agree to independently follow Jesus. That's the same Jesus who told a rich young man in the gospel lesson that in order to receive the kingdom of heaven, that man would have to go off, or anybody else would have to go off, and sell all that they owned and give the money to the poor. So gentlemen, I ask you, are you sure that this is the Jesus that you want to model? You know, that would mean selling your video games, footballs, basketball hoops, books, iPods, cell phones, computers, and your parents' cars. I just threw that one in there because I think it would be fun. <laughs> sell it all, Jesus said, sell it all! Sell it all and you will inherit eternal life. Being a disciple of Jesus can be a bit radical. 
the author of Hebrews that, that um, Jay just read for us, says that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. No kidding in that gospel lesson today when Jesus' sharp, piercing word says, sell it all and you'll get the kingdom of heaven. Now as I look around the room right now, I don't know some of you, but I know many of you, and I wonder if there's anyone in this room who has followed Jesus and has done what Jesus has asked us to do in this gospel lesson. Sell, give to the poor, and follow him. I'm guessing that most of us would like to try to interpret today's lesson in a way that would satisfy our personal desires to keep our possessions. Because we like our stuff. We like to shop and buy stuff. And at the same time, we like our stuff, but we also want the kingdom of heaven. Many of us would like to say that that little gospel story is about getting rid of stuff. It's not about getting rid of your stuff, but it's more about evaluating your stuff and your life to see what things in your life get in the way of your relationship with God. And that's a real fine way of looking at it, but that's not what Jesus said. He said, go and sell and give. That's it. Amen. So confirmation students, at this time, I'd like you to bring your cell phones and any electronic devices that you have with you and place them at the altar. We'll sell them and give the money to the food pantry. <laughs> Disciples. Okay, well, ask your parents to do that now. Aunts and uncles and grandparents? Anybody from La Crosse? <laughs> now, there are a couple of other things we need to look at in this gospel lesson. Even though Jesus was uncomfortably clear and direct with that man asking how he could inherit eternal life, there's some good news. The man walked away. The man walked away and he apparently didn't sell everything. But notice Jesus' response. He didn't condemn the man. He didn't hold him in scorn. It says that Jesus loved him. And then later, when the disciples asked for clarification about all that stuff and that camel thing, Jesus said to them that it was impossible, it is impossible, for a mortal to do anything to win eternal life. But Jesus also said to the disciples of his time and to those of us who are disciples today that for God, all things are possible. For God, all things are possible. Jesus reminds us that we are totally dependent on God's gracious love in order to receive the gifts that God wants to freely give us. That's the message, confirmation students. As you grow up, you're in ninth grade, you're now in high school. As you grow up, you're becoming less dependent on your parents. But as disciples today, you, like the rest of us, will always be totally, totally dependent on God for the gift of eternal life. Because God is willing to give each of us that gift, we have the desire to model Christ, to model Jesus, and to work for peace and justice in the world. Now you guys, you five guys in the front row, by the way, this class has already always been known as that class of boys. <laughs> they were never in third grade, they were never in fifth grade, they were never really in confirmation, they were always that class of boys. You boys, young men, have already been doing some of that peace and justice stuff. Some of you have volunteered for Habitat for Humanity, some of you have volunteered over time for the Road Home Program, and I know some of you are going to this week. Some of you gave up a week of your summer vacation this last summer to work out at Conference Point down in Williams Bay, where you broke up asphalt and you cleaned off that parking lot, and it was hot and it was dirty, and I worked harder than any of you. <laughs> Except when I was laying in that wheelbarrow, and Dana was pushing me around. The summer before, many of you went to Milwaukee and packed school bags for underprivileged kids in the school system. Many of you are going on a high school mission trip to, out to paint houses in Vermont this next summer. But the bottom line, the bottom line is that none of those actions will win you God's kingdom. None of those good deeds, none of your behaviors are what gets you eternal life. 
that for you and for all of us can only come from God. And when we screw up, and we all do, even your parents, I hate to break it to you, we all screw up. We still have confidence that God will look at us in love, forgive us, and continue to make us the recipients of God's good things. So, class of boys, as I've told you in the past, I really do hope that you take that baptismal promise that you're going to reaffirm this morning very seriously. I hope that Lakeview Lutheran Church, this place right here, will be the beginning of a new life for you in this community. In this community where you can come and worship often, where you can share in that meal of grace that we have every time we gather, where you can come and share with all of us in the acts of discipleship that we can offer to the world. And I rejoice with you guys. I rejoice with you and your families today. I give thanks that God has given you to this church, that I know you, and that God will give you the kingdom of heaven because that's what God chooses to do. Please rise for the hymn. Don't forget to turn the mic on. reject sin and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, together, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that may draw you away from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father, in Jesus Christ the Son of God, and in God the Holy Spirit?
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. I would ask you all to turn and face the congregation. Let us now rejoice with these brothers. They're not sisters today. They're all brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the light of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us applaud our confirmation students. And I'm going home to celebrate this afternoon that I don't have to put up with you on a Sunday morning ever. No, no, no. <laughs> um, I would invite the congregation to rise and as they return to the seats, share the peace of the Lord with one another. Peace with You may remain standing and we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give thanks for your church. We give thanks that you bless your church with your word and sacramental gifts. Continue to send your church, each one of us, boldly into the world to love and serve all people as Jesus modeled. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over us each day and give us the courage and the strength to not be led by our possessions and wealth. Give us generous hearts and helping hands so that we can strive for justice and equality, sharing what we have access to. We ask not only that you bless your church with these qualities, but that you also bestow them upon all political leaders. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the Road Home Program of Dane County and for giving our congregation the opportunity and the challenge this week to assist people in our community who are homeless. Watch over our week and use our volunteers to bring comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Make your Holy Spirit awaken Ben, Connor, Garrett, Jacob, and Colton this morning as they have affirmed their baptismal covenant. Hold them close. Give our congregation the desire to wrap them in love and to use each of them and their unique gifts to share the gospel from this place. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Bring a rich measure of comfort to anyone who grieves today. Make your presence felt in war-torn lands and in places where terrorism is a regular occurrence. And hate and bigotry. Heal those who struggle, including Sumi Lombardino, Kay Richmond, Bart Severson, Bill Bakken, Larry Myers, Lynn Ewart, John Pabecki, and anyone else who we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we receive the morning offering. Please rise if you are able. And let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, Give us glad and generous hearts. 
Ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this to remember me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Come and eat, the meal is ready. I would ask two servers to kneel at the rail. The congregation may be seated. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And let us pray. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love, Jesus, our risen Savior. As you now send us out into the world, guard us from the power of evil, keep us in unity with all your people, and by your Spirit, move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated as the choir comes forward to the benediction.